Nope, it's not my birthday today. All these people are here to celebrate the first 10 years of ALMA, one of the biggest telescope arrays in the world. Wonder what all the fuss is about? Join me on a trip to Chile and far beyond to find out. I've been working for ALMA, in which ESO is a partner, since before it started science operations. I've watched it grow and flourish over the years, and I'm super excited now to be celebrating its 10th birthday. The party's on in Puerto Varas in southern Chile, where astronomers from around the world have gathered to celebrate their scientific discoveries with ALMA over the past decade. The Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array is located in a very special place, here in northern Chile in the Atacama Desert on the Chajnantor Plain. It looks and feels a little bit like the moon or like Mars, also in terms of the lack of oxygen, which is why I'm wearing this. The reason ALMA has to be so high up is because our atmosphere is opaque to some of the types of radiation that ALMA wants to observe, the millimetre and in particular the sub-millimetre wavelengths. It observes the invisible universe that we cannot see with our eyes or with optical telescopes. With ALMA we can observe the cold universe and go in search of our cosmic origins. The coolest thing about ALMA for me is uh, its ability to observe and map comets. Comets are the coldest natural objects in our solar system. They produce gases that we can observe with ALMA that give us a window back in time to what the conditions were like at the very dawn of our solar system. Because ALMA is so much more powerful than previous millimeter submillimeter telescopes, it has revolutionized many areas of astronomy. This is probably one of the most famous astronomical pictures ever. The first direct image of the giant black hole in the center of the galaxy, M87. You may have heard that in order to obtain it, telescopes from around the world had to be combined into one giant virtual telescope, the Event Horizon Telescope. But did you also know that without ALMA, this image would have not been possible? The giant light bucket that is ALMA's 66 antennas all pulled together was used as a reference for the much weaker signals from the smaller telescopes. Without this, the complicated reconstruction that was necessary to obtain this amazing image would simply not have been possible. And the same is of course also true for the image of the black hole in the centre of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. More recently, ALMA worked together with other telescopes to study a different aspect of the M87 black hole, the powerful jet being ejected from it. Basically, a black hole gobbles up the material spiralling in towards it, but it can't absorb the energy quickly enough, and this energy is released. The black hole needs to let off steam in the form of jets. With this new image, we can study the emergence of the jet from the ring of material around the black hole, so we can see how quickly the black hole is eating this material. Right now, the M87 black hole is not particularly hungry, but ALMA and the other telescopes will continue watching it, just in case. Unlike the VLT, ALMA can't see most stars directly, but what it can see is the cold gas and dust from which stars are born. ALMA has been fantastic in observing regions within galaxies that have low content of gas and dust. And these scenarios are ideal for studying star formation in regions that resemble very early stages of the universe. ALMA is great at finding star-forming galaxies and seeing exactly where in these galaxies the stars are being born. For example, it took a look at the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which shows bunches of galaxies that all look very similar. But in the ALMA image, the star-forming ones popped right out of the image. With ALMA, we can see how fast star formation was happening in the early universe 10 billion years ago. And we could also determine that the more massive galaxies are forming stars at a higher rate. Close to home, ALMA has taken some stunning images of nearby galaxies. 
we can see the details of the gas and dust clouds from which stars are formed. So we can work out what exactly triggers the birth of stars. That reminds me of one of my favorite historic ALMA images, the antennae galaxies. These are a pair of nearby galaxies that are in the process of colliding, and where they're interacting, stars are forming at a particularly high rate. This image was taken back in 2011, when ALMA was just taking its very first baby steps, and it had only 12 antennas. Ask pretty much any astronomer what they think the coolest ALMA result has been in the last decade, and 9 out of 10 will say HL Tau. HL Tau is a young stellar system about 450 light years away from us that has a debris disk around it. And in the 2014 image taken with ALMA, what we saw was not just the debris disk, but we also saw a series of dark concentric rings. And in these rings, planets are most likely being formed. Since then, ALMA has observed many more of these so-called protoplanetary disks in exquisite detail, changing forever the way we think of planet formation. We've seen a moon forming in one of these systems, and we have evidence that multiple planets can share the same orbit. ALMA has revolutionized our field of planet formation and planet studies because its incredible sensitivity can pick up on the faintest emissions. So we can pick up these tiny bits of dust that are around in the system. We can infer from the distribution of this gas and dust properties about the planets that have already formed there, how big they are, what kind of orbits they are, and how these systems evolve, because we know these are the systems that end up looking like our solar system. ALMA is also a master at astrochemistry, so finding out what elements the stuff around us is actually made from. We have, for instance, found water and organic molecules in planet-forming disks, which leads us to believe that these elements might also move to the planets themselves and potentially could form life, helping us solve the mystery of our cosmic origins once and for all. We are observing more and more complex molecules in space, getting us one step closer to understanding the origin of life in the universe. This is all pretty impressive. But ALMA has done so much more. I studied masers, which are like lasers that happen in space. They occur in very special regions of the universe. And one of these special regions is around supermassive black holes. What ALMA does is to study these masers for the first time in new bands and new frequencies, telling us a lot more about the gas that's orbiting supermassive black holes. My scientific highlight of ALMA is related to eruptive stars and the effect they have in protoplanetary disk and in planet formation. It's just amazing to think that 25 years ago, none of this was available to us. And now there's so much data. The theorists are gonna have a field day uh, playing with all the, the models they have to try and explain this data. So really exciting. I don't know about you, but I am pretty stoked about what ALMA has achieved in its first 10 years. And I'm even more excited about the future. ALMA is getting an important upgrade, the wideband sensitivity upgrade. After this, it will be able to take images such as that of HL Tau up to three times faster, and it will be able to find molecules up to a whopping 50 times faster than now. So we'll be able to look at many more black holes, galaxies, and planets forming, and who knows what we'll find. Happy birthday, Alma.